Steve, tell me all about this beautiful little boat. Okay, so she was, uh, it's Cormorant, she's uh, a gaff yawl, she was built in 1911. She was built just over the Solent by A.R. Lukes. Uh, or the site now is occupied by uh, the Royal Southern. Uh, so um, it's, it's exactly that site. And um, yeah, so she was built 1911, pitch pine on oak, and, um, and uh, always had the gaff yawl rig. Um, as far as we know, we've got some pictures of her uh, sailing in the 40s with the same rig um, up on the Deben, uh, which are uh, wonderful with a family on board. Um, but now we generally just race her. Uh, we don't do a lot of cruising. As you see, accommodation is, uh, is a bit sparse and, um, and taken up by uh, quite a number of sails that we've got. We can set up to seven sails on a reach. Um, so, uh, you know, we carry a lot of sails and um, some of which I'm not even sure what, what, what they are and whether they've ever been used. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, sure we'll, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. And you bought her from uh, quite a well-known photographer on the East Coast. Yes, you? that's right. Den and Dickie, Den Phillips, uh, who's you know the uh, very famous black and white uh, photographer. Uh, we've, got, we've got plenty of her pictures. And uh, uh, Dickie, her husband, they, they restored Cormorant. Um, uh, Peter Brooks restored her for them in Downs, Downs Road Boatyard uh, in Malden. And uh, yes, she was restored alongside the West Solent, so she's got some this cockpits fairly similar to how, how a West Solent is, and uh, so there's definitely a little bit of crossover there. But um, yes, yeah, so I was fortunate to buy, buy her off, off them, uh, having been fully restored. So uh, I, I'm just the painter and decorator now. She's 30 foot on deck. Um, with her pointy bits, the bumpkin, uh, mizzen boom and bowsprit, she's about 42 foot overall. Um, and uh, she's 22 foot on the waterline, so it's a long counter. The counter is around about 6 foot, um, so long overhangs and spoon bow. Uh, and she draws uh, just, just over 4 foot, so um, yeah, she's, she's, she's quite small, you know, very low free ball, very narrow, only 7.5 foot wide. So um, yes, she's, uh, she's, she looks very small and, and not many people can believe she's her overall length looking at her. So what is it that's so special about this boat for you? Um, I, I think when you're sailing along, you know, and when you've seen the black and white pictures of her sailing in the 40s and nothing's changed, you recognise the boat entirely. Um, the quality of the build, yeah, the way and she, she's been very fortunate over the years, she's still got her leg keel, um, she's still all originally planked. Um, so there's that, that, you know, that sort of link back to, uh, you know, a, a, the great era of yachting, if you like. Um, so, so that's very special. Um, and, uh, and yeah, when she's, when we've really got her going, it's, it's fantastic. There's just no better feeling. Um, so I, I think the sailing is, is just wonderful and she's very pretty. So, you know, the row away, the back factor is always very, very pleasing. Uh, just not so much when I'm having to paint her and varnish her. That's the, <laughs> that's the bit. Of, that's the hard work. <laughs> Steve, just tell me about your racing today. Uh, it's been painful today. We couldn't get round the uh, the windward mark. Uh, too light for us. Uh, not many in our class did. Um, uh, we think maybe two got round. Um, not sure which one of those finished or if they did. Uh, so tricky. We're a very we're very, we've got a very small rig, being a yule rig, um, so uh, we need a bit more breeze uh, than, than we had today. Uh, and with a strong ebb tide, we were always up against it. But it was good fun, and, uh, uh, and it's lovely and sunny, and it's warm, and someone's upset the red funnel. So uh, <laughs> it's been a good day. <laughs> it's been a good day, but we're calling it quits now, we think. Uh, we've waited out. It sounds like the VHF now saying it's probably being canned, um, but uh, who knows? So you don't know whether it's on or off then? Uh, I think they've postponed. They've pushed back by another 30 minutes, um, uh, and behind you now uh, is the entrance to Cows. We're about to hang a left and go go in there, and uh, and win the first of the bar. I think. Is this your normal rig for getting back into port? It is uh, down here. We never really used to do this on the east coast so much, but uh, because it's so busy here, 
sometimes she can be quite tricky to get back into uh, cows because we've got the ferries that are coming in and out. There's the big vehicle ferry, passenger ferry, and there's also the red jet that bursts here. Uh, so if there isn't any wind on a day like today, we can really be caught out. She's not the easiest boat to sail in, in confined courses. So uh, yes, we try and use a rib where possible. Uh, and maybe we, if we haven't got the crew, we'll leave the rib out on a mooring just outside the breakwater, go sailing and then sail back onto the rib and then just tow her in for the last bit. Uh, this is our mooring out here behind you. We've got a mooring over there, so that's quite easy to get on. But putting her inside a, uh, into the marina can be really tricky. Has, has she never had an engine? Uh, she, not while I've owned her, uh, and I think when she was restored, uh, the, there was a Stuart Turner in her that they took out. Uh, so I think there was one in her for a period in the 70s, a sort of petrol thing. I doubt whether that was very reliable. Um, and, uh, and since then, no, we, we've, we've not had a, a, an inboard engine. Are you not tempted to? It would certainly make life a lot easier. <laughs> uh, and I always think I should, and, um, well, I don't know, stupid purist, I suppose, so, um, but yes, certainly tempted to, uh, just haven't so far. And bringing her in on, um, on a rib, it all looks a bit of a, Bit of a hassle. Do you find it a hassle? Or yeah, yeah. Well, of course it's a hassle. Um, uh, but uh, got good at it over the years. Uh, you know, uh, had to learn pretty quick. I've always got it right. Um, but, uh, but most of the time, if you've got a good crew, it takes the pressure off. Um, if you've got people that are fairly new to sailing, it's that, that is tricky. Um, but uh, I guess after a while, you get used to it and. Um, yeah, you don't have all the, all the engine smells and all that sort of stuff downstairs. It's, it's the only benefit I can think of not having an engine. But, uh, but you know, down here there's, there's a lot of deep water everywhere on the East Coast where I had it before. You know, you, you have to be a bit more careful of the, of the mud. But down here there's a lot of room to manoeuvre out on the Solent. So, um, you know, she's a pleasure. But uh, And she's fairly easy to get back on a mooring. It's only bringing her into marinas, which is the tricky bit. So you're not going to rush out and get an engine? No, I'm afraid not. No, if somebody else takes her on one day, then uh, I'll leave them to make that decision. But I, I haven't. Uh, she's got a beautiful teak cockpit, uh, which would all have to be ripped up, and uh, I just can't bring myself to do that. And I don't think Den and Dicky would ever talk to me again either. So that's, that's uh, another factor. <laughs>